Ready? Jazz Jackrabbit in Soul Plane. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a terrible movie. Hello, and welcome to Rhythm and Pixels, a video game music podcast. This is episode 27-6, and we are your hosts. My name is Rob Nichols. And I'm Pernell. And every week we listen to great video game music from all consoles and all generations. We pick a topic, and we pick some tunes related to that topic, and we talk about it, we listen to the music, we analyze it. And we talk about everything else in between. We write dissertations sometimes too regarding the track. Uh, look, I have we speak it in front of a live studio audience. I have a doctorate in um, I have a doctorate in Adventure Island, and it was handed to me by Master Higgins. <laughs> Christ, <laughs> you both like use that to, to leap into promoting the XVG across. Womp, womp. Don't waste that. If Don't you, waste that statement. If you enjoy uh, podcasts and you enjoy video game music, please continue listening to this one. And if you don't like this one, there's other podcasts you can listen to. Check out XVGM Radio, starring Mike and Justin Bieber. Justin Schneider. His name is Bieber. <laughs> don't just cold blooded. He's just we're, changed we're, his name because he's he's trying to hide his fame. That is well, no nonsense. <laughs> but I guess it could be because with be. the crossover, but. We are going to be on their show fairly soon. Um, we're not sure when the episode itself will be released. Yeah, but we'll be on there fairly soon. They seem more it's organized. It's going to be a fun episode. <laughs> it's going to be was it was it Adventure Island versus Wonder Boy? Yeah, I'm Team Wonder Boy. By the way, just point that out. Yeah, I'm just saying. I'm going both ways. I'm going to see. I'm going to see who's going to come out on top, and then I'm, <laughs> I'm going to take. That side. Gonna, are you going to pull a, a Always Sunny Mac on this one? <laughs> oh like, yeah, I'm playing both sides. I always come out on top. Oh, mercy. Or oh, I'm Man. always going to lose. One or the other. <laughs> <laughs> if that's the case, do you really are playing both sides correctly? <laughs> you got to uh, win one way or the other. So I haven't had really any time to play games the past, couple, the past few weeks, actually. So, Pranel, what have you been into? Like, uh, Oh, Christ. For me, it's even stranger because in my, I'm dealing with some, some mental block. Yeah. So I play games still, but nothing like I should. Like... I finally booted up uh, Persona 5 Strikers again for the first time and since it came out, really, and I got mm. to the first boss. Finally! Finally! You want further context on what the heck's going on with Parnell? I've owned a PS5 for a month. It's oh. still sitting in this box downstairs in the living room. I never I, even took it out. I didn't even know you picked and one I, up. Or you were able to yeah, pick no one, one up. Yeah, no one does. No one does, because it was such a, a non-thing for me. Like, mm. I got it, and I had agreed to the pickup, and I was like, well, now I got to follow through. So here we go. Swap, swoop. And I bought it. And then I went home and I put it in the living room and sounds it just like kind of stayed there. Sounds like a shady deal went down. It was shady. Did I it, had to drive and did everything. It, did it involve doing your taxes? <laughs> oh, no, no taxes. No taxes. <laughs> well, I, if they involved doing my taxes, I'd have been screwed because I still haven't done my taxes yet. Like authentic taxes. You know, that's the <laughs> one thing that's good about the pandemic is that we're all home. You know, especially during the beginning taxes. of lockdown, we were all able to be home to play more video games. So you can write, you can you can take your video game consoles and write them off on your taxes. I, I am an expert. No, you can't. But if you could, that would be really awesome. Look at my so would, look at my diploma on the wall, given to me by Master Higgins. <laughs> Rob, Master those are Higgins. sound pen. Those are those are sound tiles. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. But like, as far as like games I've actually been playing, yeah. uh, I've played uh, Persona Five Strikers a bit. Mm-hmm. Um. What else? I just downloaded the Saga Frontier Remastered because I'm that random guy. I'm still playing, oddly enough, Daddish. And this recent game by the same guy that involves like a chicken who pilots a mech suit. Oh, which is odd. Oh, wait, I'm thinking um, of a goose that pilots a mech suit and runs around. It's like a running gun. And there's also, what was it? Uh, so I, I bought Monster Hunter Rise. And then Pete, it, this is the strangest thing. I bought Monster Hunter Rise thinking maybe this will be the game that gets me fired up and back into playing more stuff again. Mm-hmm. And I posted a picture of it on Facebook and a couple of people were giving me crap about, oh, this is going to be a wall candy game. I ain't going to actually play this game. This is, this is a joke that never stops. So I was like, you know what? I don't want to play it now. The hell with it. Like, so I just doubled down on exercise. So I would go to the gym every day. And then I come home and was like, you know what? I don't feel like playing it. I have time and I don't want to play it. That's my choice now. I'm choosing not to play this game. Throw it in the corner. Just ignored it. Have time to finally play a game. I play something different. I started playing Bloodborne again with Matt. 
Oh, and cool. And it's like, I could be playing, you know, Monster Hunter Rise, but screw that. I don't feel like You want to have fun people, right now. You want to have fun. And they'll say... Yeah, yeah I want to have fun. So people, people still come and it's like, well, you're missing out, Pernell, because Mods on response like, well, maybe you shouldn't have been jerks about it, because now I don't want the fun. I'm going to have my own fun in a different way. Now I got a wall candy game. Screw you. Mm. So it's like, no, I like to have games that I can justify owning in some way, shape, or form to say, this is a game I always wanted to play. This is a game I like. Like, um, Yokai Watch 3 was a big thing that came up recently. That game sells for a lot now, apparently. But I never played through Yokai Watch 1 and 2, so I don't like this series enough to justify buying 3. So I was like, I'm not going to buy it. I don't care. Um, and Solo Sanctuary said, I hardly play these days as well. Solidarity, friend. But there are times I play Fall Guys and Muse Dash. And by the way, Muse Dash is great. That game is that is a game I should have mentioned. I do play that before bed sometimes. Oh, yeah? Yes, it is. I bought it on sale for the Switch not too long ago because a friend of mine suggested and he was like, Pearl, you would like this because it's, it's very it, it brings back vibes like old Bimani game music. And I was like, really? Because as you know, that was one of the main draws I had to Bimani was the actual music. Right? It was like all like, you know, excited, like, chill core and like grumble smash and a bunch of genres I'm making up right now and uh, booted it up. I was already addicted to it. And it's simple because it only uses two buttons, <laughs> but it's really good. Oh, and yeah, it gets no, no. to be we did, very we have, difficult. We have, we have talked about Muse Dash. I'm looking at a, a, the gameplay now. I remember this now. I forget that it was it, called Muse Dash. Mm-hmm. There's, there's a new it's rhythm a, game coming out too that has like a really cool like anime, like FLCL style. It's mm-hmm. like where music is illegal. I forget what it's called. Someone's going to remember it, but it's, it's not out yet. It's, I think it's in development or it's in Kickstarter right now, and it looks really neat. I also need to play that metal game that I because I bought it but it just didn't stick with it. It was called like Double Kick Heroes, Ooh. which is like a metal game where you're a band in a car going on a cross country trip, <laughs> and the band plays instruments on the car, but the instrument playing also fires guns and grenades. So you're playing metal tracks while fighting zombies that are coming at you from behind the car. Yeah, and it's it gets to be pretty intense too. But um, oh, it looks the great. answer so <laughs> <was a> statement. <laughs> yes, play more music games. You, you always have someone to chat with as far as like either Rob or I as far as talking about music games because that's our that's how we that's part of how we became friends like we played DDR a lot and then yeah. we played like Pump It Up and Guitar Freaks and Pop and Music and for the most part rhythm games are the only reason I really even go to arcades anymore no it really like, is they, like um even when we go to like conventions and stuff like too many games and other things like that we end up spending a lot of our time just like playing you know you beat or pump it up or whatever other rhythm games are available there oh yeah, yeah that's, what we're that's, that's where the fire that's is what we're into and uh, the best part about it and then i'll really stop rambling <laughs> that's okay. is the fact that i feel like this is a large contributor to that that and also just general video games but uh there's always that feeling where you talk about your parents getting into that moment where it's like i listen to the music i liked in high school like i'm still listening to like in my, in my generation because i'm old it'd be like oh i'm still listening to nirvana and uh, and uh, Third Eye Blind or whatever the heck else. <laughs> and it's We're like, not listening to Third Eye Blind. But the thing is, like, I I listen to new music all the time. Like, I very rarely rest on my laurels for music. And a large part of that is because, you know, one, just having access to like things like Spotify and all makes it easy to access stuff. But in addition to that, playing rhythm games, you're always being exposed to new sounds, new artists, even if they're just like studio artists, like in-game studio artists. And that, in turn, makes you want to find more music that sounds like what you're hearing in the games. So you just constantly find yourself reaching out for new tunes, and you don't generally have enough time to just be like, or have the means to be like, you know, I'm just going to not, not bother. I don't want to look for anything else. I'm going to listen to old stuff because, no, you got something new on fire that you want to pick up. You want to hear, you want to hear more Choco Pop, <laughs> which apparently is a genre according to pop music. Yeah, um, I'm, um, I'm slowly, like, uh, my the speeds that I'm able to play at in ITG now are, are, are getting faster, which means I'm listening to other styles of music and just more music that I wouldn't normally listen to, which is like really, really fast, like 180, 200 BPM, like loud anime music that's very noisy. <laughs> and, oh, yeah. Or like anime sounding music, like really like, like just has just, just Japanese singing, very loud, very high pitched. Um, and like, I'm st- it's starting to grow on me, you know? <laughs> I'm not describing it very well. Because I don't, I don't know the names, but it is really starting to grow on me. And I'm like, well, now I want to play that one again. Now I want to play that one again. But normally, I would just, I would just ignore that stuff at all costs. 
because I'm well, like, well, it's a large. Well, it's not just the music; it's also the fact that you are playing to the beat of the track, yeah. And that kind of ingrains the interest in you because now you're like that part where the girl's like, yum 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 <laughs> yum. It's like if you were just listening to it in the radio, it's like, eh, this is kind of lame. But hearing it in the game yeah. and stepping to each yum, now you're like, oh, I know, I like that part. Rhythm because games, that's when my feet do this. Yes, rhythm games have that power to like make you interested in music again, and then you get to the point. Like there's a there's like there's a there's a there's a uh, like rhythm gamers in the beginning <laughs> are very <laughs> are very excited you know you know and it's very fun learning everything and then you then you then there's a part of the rhythm gamers where like oh well, now I want to get better and now it's still really exciting and then and then there's the expert rhythm gamers that are just like they hate themselves they hate their lives they hate the game but they don't play anything else they gotta stick with it. <laughs> right. Like I will say, I'm getting close to test- that. <laughs> like the the biggest testament to like Pernell would never listen to this music and yet now he loves it is there was an old DS game called Elite Beat Agents, yeah. which is oh that's what OSU is, OSU OSU is game based game. on that. Yes, yeah. exactly, exactly. Now Elite Beat Agents was the US version of Tatake Owenden. and so as it goes, when games get ported to the states, they're like, we gotta come up with some really great. U.S. music that people will love, but when they went and grabbed it, it was like, here's some old licensed music <laughs> that's like almost free domain. So it was like a bunch of trash. I was like, why would I listen to this in a game? Like, but playing it in the game, it clicked. And the for, to this day, the two songs that just surprisingly became addictive to me that I would not, I don't think I would have liked otherwise, like Jumpin' Jack Flash, which was like <laughs> one of the final tracks that played in the game. <laughs> I became addicted to that. And it's that song called Lala by uh, some lady pop artist. Um, but it, I shouldn't like it. And I remember looking at the track list and laughing at how stupid the track list was. But then playing that stage, like, this is really good. I'm kind of hooked on this right now. And I played it ad nauseum. It's if you very hear hard the DS- to, to search for. If you Google pop song and Lala, you'll never find what you're looking for. <laughs> oh, yeah, because Lala is that general music sound. You might find <laughs> la, Lunar la, la, 2 la, bar la, music. La, 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 la. <laughs> um, oh, wait, but wait. Yeah, that's- is it the all around the world? No, no, ain't that. Is I'll, I'll bring it up later if I can remember, but I don't want to <laughs> bog everybody right, yeah, more than right. like Parnell well, and Rob's quest for the song La La. Yeah, I won't, I won't, <laughs> I won't hum the music right now. We're right now we're going to get into our topic and we're going to listen to some great music. This is our episode is all about tavern music, so not necessarily going to a bar. We're not advocating that you know everyone's got their own thing, everyone's got their own history with with alcohol. It doesn't like we're not all about that. This episode is about the music you would hear in a tavern in a game sometimes in an inn or a, or a restaurant um, in a game or music that you would imagine hearing at a tavern in real life we do advocate getting together with your friends <laughs> and interacting with them which yeah. is something that safely. a lot of people like safely, to do with tavern. oh of course yeah, yeah. But please do that. Stick. Don't stick. bring dynamite. No. Leave the dynamite at home. <laughs> Leave all that at home. So I'm going to start with some mu- 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 music. This mu- one. Mu- came- mu- oh, and also this is our, our Patreon episode. So almost, I think all of our tracks are submitted from listeners and Patreon members, and we will be reading their testimonials. Uh- I'm pretty sure they are all submitted by them. Yeah, like, they there's are. no Eric Pernell snuck one in there under the alias U Swiss R D Wo. I don't know, man. I don't I don't I don't look at the uh, the change history on this document. <laughs> you can sneak anything in there. I'd be like, all right. This La Mulata track looks especially suspicious. Oh, why, Tavern, huh? Why we play that Rye Star song three times in a row? I guess I say, <laughs> people love it. Stephen right. Miller loves Rye Star for some reason. What's going on? So the first track is from picked from Matt's Holmquist. The track is called Tavern from the game Fantasy Life, composed by Nobuo Uematsu.
Oh yeah, this, you're listening to Tavern, definitely Tavern, from the game <laughs> Fantasy Life, composed by Nabuo Uematsu. This was picked by Mats Holmquist, and he says, um, it's from such an awesome game. I mean, you can take a job as a fisherman like it was made for me. And that's all I said. can honestly second that statement, too, because I didn't pick the track, to, and I'm glad you did, but I was very close to because I was addicted to fantasy life, like obsessed with it. I beat, I bought all the DLC and maxed out as in like, oh, there's like, there's like maybe 10 jobs in the game and they range from like a fisherman or a tailor to like a warrior or a wizard. Mm -hmm. And each time you rank up, it goes like, you know, apprentice, you know, hero, superhero. And I think the final task, the final version you can get is creator. Like you become a god at the craft. And I've gotten god status in like three of the jobs in the game oh, wow. and then got to like the highest status before DLC on every other job. Hmm. Like I was addicted to this game in a way that doesn't happen very often. And then I was so sad when they announced the sequel. The sequel ended up being mobile only. And even beyond, that's not the real issue, though. That's just part of it. I know you saw the face. Oh. But they also killed a large part of what made the game special because they were trying to adhere to the mobile game model. Mm -hmm. Like, it was, it's a shame because Fantasy Life, to me, was a kind of one-of-a-kind game in a way that, like he said, like you could be a fisherman in this game. You could be a tailor in this game. You could be a blacksmith in this game. And it made it all work in a way where it was like, this is actually fun to do. I want to be a blacksmith. I want to just make a bunch of crazy weapons for people to buy. Um, it's a fantastic title, worthy of the name Level 5. Hmm. And I do hope in some way that it makes an appearance in some capacity again in the future. Maybe in it Smash. It would be a great Switch team. You'll see it in Smash. No, I, yeah. I can't imagine that. Like, <laughs> hey, we're new to Smash Brothers. We've got Fantasy Life Guy. <laughs> it's just like, just switch his jobs with the B button. <laughs> I'll tell you, this, this music is straight up like German, like beer hall, you know, beer garden. Like there, this is raucous music, you know. Um, it's yes. just a violin or a fiddle and everyone's clapping. Um, and it made me think about food. So what's your favorite like like bar food? Well, this is kind of cheating because I don't know if it's really considered bar food, but this music reminds me of this type of bar. There used to be a place I used to go that now isn't around anymore called Hofbrauhaus. Mm. Though it might exist in that other sounds places. Familiar, the yeah. One, yeah, there's other places that might still have, but the one I used to go to closed up, which sucks. Um, but they served a lot of German grub, mm -hmm. German bar grub, and there was a like, currywurst sausage that you could get there. <laughs> that was like it was literal crack. It that sounds crack. like that sounds like Pernell food. Curry, it was currywurst. Really, I would buy the currywurst with a bunch of other random stuff, but then always just mix a bunch of that stuff into the currywurst because <laughs> I wanted curry on everything. <laughs> it was really, really good. I was a fan, and if I ever come across another Hofbrau how closer to myself i will go there again when we're all running and up and mobile again oh, we so. have um so uh, near us in old newcastle uh, which is funny old newcastle uh we have a place called jessup's tavern which this music kind of reminds me of that one too it's very old school um it's like revolutionary war old school um mm. and have you been there Pernell? i have not the only I, place i've ever been to was like cage is like uh that one Cajun restaurant down there that has Captain Crunch tenders. It's, uh, so, uh, so Old Newcastle is like really, like, it's super, super old. It's like, you know, early, early, early days of America old. And I don't think you'd fit in the building. <laughs> well, that's one of those old buildings where it's kind of like the, the, the ceilings are a little shorter. But it's it's cool because it's like they kept a lot of the um, the aesthetics to be like still like that style. Um, I know the bartenders and the the, the wait staff. They all wear the the, the, the costumes or the, or the 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 dress from that day. And Period they, wear. But for some reason, that bar is really obsessed with the Belgian style beer, and that's all they serve. <laughs> there you go. Which is I mean, fine. You know it's what you're getting when you show thing. up. Yeah, um, but they're really into like shepherd's pie, like really heavy stuff. But for me, the best bar food is pizza. Pizza, pizza, pizza. I can pizza at the bar. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. It's because it's sharing. You can share it. You share it, and you can eat it. All for silence. <laughs> All for silence. You my pizza. I share no pizza. Give me. You share no pizza. Um, but no, I think that's the best. I think I'm just craving pizza right now. I don't know why. For good reason. This pizza's delicious. Oh, I finally had that. Just you know, as an aside, and I don't think anyone not listening to the show will understand it. 
I finally had that stuff um, from Brandywine Brewing. No, it was uh, the place at the old train station near you. What's it called? Yes. I finally had some. It was good. Metro Pizza? Yeah, Metro Pizza. Yeah, oh, it was really good. They had, I had a big um, like Veggie Supreme like style of all this stuff on it. It was awesome. For those listening, this place that he's referring to serves wood fire oven pieces. It's good. Which they usually come out like... It can either be either crispy or spongy. It just depends on how long they kept it in the oven. But either version of it is delicious. Mm. Yeah, um, yeah, it was all crispy. It was, it was fantastic. So I'm definitely going to go back to there. I've been wanting to go back... Because um, I know they have like a microbrewery or whatever going on there, but um, I've driven by there and it is way too crowded. It's always crowded for me to to feel comfortable going into a place during the pandemic. So I'm always like, maybe I'll do takeout one day, but I just haven't had the, I haven't had the. I only, I only ever get the Terrio. I call it in, park, run in, grab it, and bounce. It's amazing to me that places are still like that. You know, just so crowded. that is well. Funny thing about that, Steve. I see. I wonder about this. I love how like this is why I like these episodes because we go off on fun tangents. So, Stephen Miller goes. I would never trust a person who does not like pizza. Um, if I'm not mistaken, you're up in you're up in the provinces. Uh, do you guys have weird pizza debates up there like we do in the states? And by that, I mean Chicago style pizza versus New York style pizza versus Detroit style oh, pizza yeah. versus California style pizza. Oh yeah, we have uh, Ottawa style pizza versus Edmonton style pizza. <laughs> good lord, no! I can wonder about that. Actually, I I like, remember, um, we went to see Ed and um, and folks at Retro World up in Connecticut, and then we learned there's a Connecticut style pizza. There's a Hartford, Connecticut style pizza, and Ed was like, "Oh, it's the best Hartford style." I'm like, "Who who talks about Hart? We talk about Chicago, we talk about Philly, we talk about New York slice." Whoa, 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 we don't. There's no Philly style pizza. Philly pizza is good though. But it's not a style, it's just pizza. Well, it's not, it's not better, it's better than Hartford style. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll give you that. No, we've got to get that New England pizza. <laughs> yeah, I see. It's well, covered, I, covered honestly, in crab. I, I could perceive New England pizza being legit, though. I mean, because of the crab. Like, okay. I could see that working. But if that, that's assuming that was the style, which it is not, no. we're making that style up. A poutine, uh, that's all That's all you pronounce. He's into the poutines. Oh, I love poutine. Craft, craft, I, do you ever have a craft poutine? <laughs> craft, what is just craft, 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 craft singles and just melted over cheese no, over fries? No, no, it's small batch. It's regional, you know. <laughs> oh, craft as in with a C, not craft with a K. Okay, yeah. Well, you were saying craft singles <laughs> melted over fries. Like that's an abomination. That's not a poutine. Yeah, yeah. At just, all. It's small. It's a small craft batch. Small batch poutine with pineapple on it. Actually, now I want to try that. Craft, Thanks for nothing. And, Thanks and, for and, that. And, in a ring of no, fruity pebble no, cereal. No, that is a lie. Hot take. Chicago deep dish is a sin again. No, no, it is delicious. I will go with this though. Chicago deep dish pizza. I will. I, I am totally fine when people say it's not a pizza. It's a casserole. I am totally fine with that statement because in my eyes it kind of is. You eat it with a knife and a fork, and you don't even need cheese half the time. But, but I'm sure you do, Rob. You monster. The point <laughs> is though. It's still delicious. It's just not right, pizza right. in my mind. It's a different kind of dish, but it's really good. If you go to Chicago at any point and you want to put this statement to the test of it being a sin against man and God, you go to... What's the name of that dang place? Um, Not Jake Melnick's. I'm going to remember it, and it's going to come up. And I'm going to say it, and you're going to be like, oh, yeah, that freaking place. It yeah. starts with a freaking Pequod's. There we go. Pequod's. Go to Pequod's. Go to Pequod's. It is the best damn pizza you've ever had in your friggin' life. And I don't care if it's a casserole. It is crack in a pan. And <laughs> someone had to take me there in person because I used to say the same thing. I was like, eh, deep dish. It's good and all, but it ain't special. I mean, I want about New York pizza with the toppings. I'm all for topping. And he's like, no, you have that Pequod's. And he took me there and we ordered it. It was ridiculously good and mm. it was heavy. And I can't go back. Like, I can't... You can't walk that back. Can't. It's like tasting ambrosia for the first time. <laughs> and God. realizing that it gives you godlike flavor sensations that's temporary. And it's not available in your hometown. It's frustrating. Like, trust me when I say that. It's really, really friggin' good. People will also mention Giordano's, and that is good too. But it ain't, it's nothing compared to, like, Pequod's. That's what you need... 
when you want to put the test, when you want to put deep dish piece of the test. That's where you go. Oh my God. And if you don't like Pequod's, I will accept that you hate deep dish. Like, but you can't say it if you haven't had that yet. Because that's the changer. That changes everything. Wow. And you can mail order it too, by this the way. This episode is turned into the pizza episode. Because everyone, <laughs> everyone in the chat is uh, is fighting about pizza. Um, so let's 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 listen to some more music, and then we'll, we'll talk about some other stuff. Because I have a really silly quiz for you and our listeners to enjoy. So Pranel, what's what's your first pick going to be? Okay, I'm going to go with this one because the style that you chose reminds me of the style that I liked about this pick, and that came from Chris Murray. And the track is titled "Here's a Health to the Company." from the game Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, and it's composed by Brian Tyler. Oh, okay. I yeah. This is a licensed track, which means that this is going to get flagged on YouTube. <laughs> that, that, that's okay. That's okay. You know, maybe they'll put some commercials in there, and they'll, they'll pick up a little bit of that that royalty, you know, that, that point two cent. <laughs> Kind friends and companions, come join me in rhyme. Come lift up your voices in chorus with mine. Come lift up your voices, all grief to refrain. For we may or might never all meet here again. Here's a health to the company, and one to my last. Let us drink and be merry, all out of one glass. Let us drink and be merry, all grief to refrain. For we may or might never all be here again. Here's a health to the dear lass that I love so well. For her style and her beauty, sure none can excel. There's a smile on her countenance as she sits on my knee. There's no man in this white world as happy as me. Here's a help to the company and one to my lass. Let us drink and be merry all out of one glass. Let us drink and be merry all grief to Our ship lies at anchor, she's ready to dock. I wish her safe landing without any shock. If ever I should meet you by land or by sea, I will always remember your kindness to me. Here's a help to the company and one to my last. Let us drink and be merry, all out of one glass. Let us drink and be merry, all grief to refrain. For we may or might never all meet here again. Welcome back. You're listening to Here's a Health to the Company from the game Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Composed by Brian Tyler and submitted by listener and friend of the show, Chris Murray. His statement is as follows. For some reason, I was drawn to a sea shanty vibe. So I looked for a sea shanty tavern video game and got a whole playlist from Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. The AC series has always been intriguing, but hasn't been something I've jumped into besides starting Valhalla with my PS5. But anyway, I digress. Here's a track fit for some VGM scallywags sharing a pint of ale before setting sail once again. I can support this feeling. It's a vibe that I've come to genuinely love. I don't get to play a lot of games that do the sea shanty bit, but one that I did get to play that really resonated with me, despite not liking the game itself, was Sea of Thieves that X that used to run on Xbox One. Mm. Um, it was a. Uh, People still play that. Right. People are still playing that game. That's oh a, yeah, that's, it's that's still going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It still gets DLC. I mean, it has a whole vibe going for it. It didn't click for me as a game, but from an atmospheric perspective, I thought it was fantastic. Uh, 
and like you'll be on a ship together hanging out and you can just like pull out mugs of ale and start swishing and drinking <laughs> together and you can get a guy with a hurdy-gurdy to start playing yeah. hurdy-gurdy tunes. Actually, um, what's interesting, I have heard about this, what's interesting is that um, you can have a different instruments. So if you have multiple people on the ship each playing different instruments, if you all play at the same time, you can like the the song like builds like all the instruments mm. end up going together and so you can have like different yes. music playing and everyone's like oh they're joining in yeah you can join in and suddenly you have like a violin in the song and, like that's a really cool idea it's it's a it's a neat sandbox like style style game which is yeah. like really i mean i think that really appeals to a lot of people it was really the only thing about it that didn't click for me just like and i know this is like a rare like a very minor thing and a lot of people didn't care like i didn't feel it was game enough yeah, like, I needed goals and I needed <laughs> things to work towards. You know, I mean, like you, like you like multiplayer and you like having fun too. But I think you mostly appreciate like a really crafted single player like narrative, right? Well, not even just that. Like no? I like the, I like well I do, but I like multiplayer too. The yeah, know, problem yeah. was we w- we would play multiplayer, but we were working towards things that didn't carry weight, mm-hmm. like. Think of the idea of, like, why MMOs work. In MMO, you and your friends get together, go on quests, you get EXP, you get money, you get cracking gear, and you get loot. And what do you do with that? You become stronger, you become better, which lets you take on harder, more challenging quests. So you're working up a ladder of progression. But with Sea of Thieves, there was no progression. It was literally, you were on these crazy quests and you got a cool hat. What does the hat do? makes you look like more like a pirate i don't know whatever (laughs) like nothing you gained made you feel like you progressed from a game perspective it was purely cosmetic stuff and everything that basically everything can be done immediately like there was nothing in the game that you needed to work towards which is like oh well i'm just gonna go on the sea and stab this skeleton in the chest whatever who cares i'm gonna stab him in his aorta well, he doesn't have any or he's a skeleton. And the point is, <laughs> you I was just, like, this is going crazy. You just, there was no progression levels there. Yeah. So eventually I was like, okay, we're having fun. We're yambling, we're chatting, but what are we doing? And when no one could really give me a tangible like quest, mm-hmm. I was like, well, we could be hanging out playing a different game. <laughs> like we could be doing all this chatter somewhere else. And that was my hiccup. There goes your Purnell Sea of Thieves side tangent related to sea shanties from Assassin's Creed Black Flag moment of the day um this was hard for me to find originally this track was um because in the in the email that was sent to us it was referenced as ac and only ac and nothing else you know ac4 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 and i was like what is (laughs) ac4 ac slater part four um but no, the name is pretty specific and and in his name that had had an official soundtrack release so it was able to uh to nail that one down. Um, in the chat right now, there's a lot of talk about uh, flour and wheat. <laughs> Basically, what's the next food topic going to be? Like, We're going to name the next song that's like, you know, I'm a huge fan of French fries. <laughs> well, you know, the best fries come from North Dakota. <laughs> uh, well, I'll tell you this. Like, um, out here where, where we live, we're getting close into like really like our fruit season's coming up. So uh, the, uh, in the next month, maybe, maybe in two months, um, strawberries will be in season. And for two glorious months, we have the sweetest strawberries I've ever had. And if you buy them, you got a sweet day to eat them. <laughs> yeah, I know <laughs> they, they don't last very long. Bush. But like the any other time you buy strawberries in the supermarket, it's just not a good time. But like if the farm that's near us, they sell them and they are incredible because they're growing them right there. Uh, but anyway, my my opinion on flour, um, I stand by King Arthur flour, which is all a, a New England uh, brand, but it is um, it's a co op, so it's owned by all of the people who work there, and it's it's an amazing flour. I love that stuff. For I my think- birthday, Christy got me King flour, King Arthur flour uh, shirts, and a, and a new bread pan, and a, and a razor so I can slash my bread. <laughs> I'm all about Percival Flower myself. You keep that King Arthur stuff. No oh, man, it's, it's all it, about Percival Flower. Percival, baby. Percival. So at the beginning of <laughs> Lancelot Flower. So at the beginning of the, um, <laughs> the beginning of the pandemic, it was hard to get uh, flour and um, some yeast. So I was going back to using, like I don't know, whatever the, the store brand is from Acme or something, and it made such a huge difference. I could not believe. Like it was noticeable. It, it was, yeah, for me anyway. It was. It, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I bake a lot, so it was super noticeable. I was like, it didn't smell right. 
it just it didn't hold together as 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 the way I wanted it to. But the King Arthur brand, like it's it's fantastic, it has the right amount of proteins. Anyway, that's uh, that's that's flower chat. It's bread chat now. <laughs> um, <laughs> Let's get into some racing jams. I mean, I'm so happy that some racing music, arcade racing music, was picked on this show. Um, but it's not the arcade. It's Sega Saturn, and uh, I didn't pick it. Electric Boogaloo picked it, uh, Pernell. I'm ready to hear how this is taverny. I'm looking forward to yeah. this. Racing I, I, tavern tuned. I think it's shoehorned in a little bit. I don't know for sure that we'll find out. Uh, I mean, I would do it because I want this music in the game. This is from the game Race Driving for the Sega Saturn. This track is called Old Sun Dawn. It's composed by Kenji Yokoyama and Naoki Shuchia.
wow, this song had an ending to it. <laughs> <laughs> this song was called The Old Sun Dawn from the game Race Driving for the Sega Saturn, composed by Kenji Yokoyama and Naoki Tsuchiya. And I'm going to guess this is like the end of the game. Maybe the credits are rolling. Uh, but hmm. Electric Boogaloo has some things to say. He says... Um, a lovely track from the Japan-only Sega Saturn port of Atari Games' classic polygonal uh, racer, Race Driven. This version, developed by Time Warner Interactive Japan, not only... That's a mouthful. Uh, not only brings us the original tracks from Hard Driven and Race Driven with their classic flat-shaded look, but it also adds versions of the same tracks with textured polygons and new vehicles like an F1 car reminiscent of virtual racing and a frog. It's the giant frog. And frog. That sounds awesome. Of course, when playing the newer textured tracks comes new background music, which are pretty good. This track in particular, Old Sun Dawn, does give the feeling that you're in some fancy restaurant or at least a neat outdoor lounge at some tropical island somewhere. I guess maybe that's why it's my favorite of the three new tracks in the Saturn version. It's a slow, relaxing tune that really fits with an old arcade driving simulator like this one. Huh. So I guess this is racing. This is, this is music you listen to while you're racing. That's interesting. Um, so he says... So if you're itching for a classic race drive and fix, the Saturn version is a good option indeed, as well as the greatly enhanced and also only released in Japan PlayStation version, dubbed Race Drive and Go Go, which includes the Saturn edition plus brand new tracks and music. I never really played mm. these. Mm. Honestly, I've never played... Hard Drive and had a SNES port, right? I honestly don't know. Like For me, racing games... If it wasn't like a general cartoony one, I didn't get into a ton of those back in the day, aside from, say, like Top Gear or something like that. But then I attempted to get more involved with them with Daytona because I needed a Saturn game to play. And Daytona was kind of right there. Yeah. And, of course, Rage Racer, because Rage Racer had a great OST. Um, And then last but unfortunately least-ish was Gran Turismo, which was just... Not a bad game, but it was so simish. <laughs> I couldn't muster up. I couldn't pull it all. So, but now over time, of course, I got really into the idea of arcade racing games, and I started really picking them up. I think the it, it's more accessible too. I feel like you don't have to know a lot about like the, all the ins and outs and the science of like driving. There's a lot. There's a lot going on. I remember trying to get into Gran Turismo, and I wanted so bad to get into Gran Turismo. I could not get into Gran Turismo. <laughs> It's like, the thing about it is like, Gran Turismo had some fun concepts to like the idea of being like, I'm going to build, I'm going to customize myself a nice car and I'm going to tear up the racetrack. I can tear, I can, and of course, if you were a fan of Initial D, well, then there you go. It's like, I can actually buy the car from Initial D and then fix it up. Yeah. But um, I, you can only listen to garbage. I'm only happy when it rains and get last place so many times <laughs> before you just kind of just hang it up. Oh, yeah. I used to loop that darn track. All right. Well, um, Purnell, are you prepared? For a quiz quiz game show thing. Quizzing, yeah! Quizzing, Quiz USA! USA. <laughs> Quiz USA, yeah! <laughs> Choose your track! Here we go, for now. You gotta guess the video game drink. So, I found a website where they made a whole bunch of drinks and shots based off of video games. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the drink. Unfortunately, listeners won't be able to see it. And I'm going to give you the recipe. And then you have to guess what game it's from. Okay. Or like what character or what. what, wait, what is it, so this is a game. It would be. It was like a drink that the restaurant or the brewer made. Yes. But it's based on a game. Yeah, exactly. So, for example, it's not in this one. It's like it's got like blue alcohol or something in it, and it's like a blue, a blue fizzy Corco. drink. And it looks yeah, but and it, and it looks like it's like a life potion, like it's a potion, like a final. Fantasy so that would be like a mana potion. Or yeah, something. mana potion. But that's a little more. Some of these are terrible. There's only six of these. I hope you like it. Let's play uh, Guess the Video Game Drink. Okay. There's the first one. It's a drink. Oh, yeah. So it's got a... It's blue on top, red on the bottom. It's a shot. It's one part grenadine, two parts menthamint schnapps, and four parts blue curacao. That sounds a lot like an alien brain hemorrhage, though, which I also really like. Okay, I don't know. This this sounds disgusting to me, but it's it's blue on top and it's red on bottom. Very delineated colors. All right, so and what, that's supposed to be based on a game. This is based on a game character, classic game, a game character. character. Yeah, yeah. This one is a game series. I'm giving you that much. Red and blue. 
Red and blue. Mainly blue, Mario. though. Mario. Well, it's probably Mario, because that sounds like his, his outfit. You think this is the Mario shot? Like a Mario-based shot. Okay. It's the Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> Why? He wears sneakers, yeah, but he's all blue. Where's the red? Just the, red sneakers? I think, it's the, I think it's supposed to be the red sneakers. Oh, they stretched it for that. <laughs> they stretched... Mario wears literally blue <laughs> suspenders and a red shirt. Like, it's... All right, it's it so, would have made so much more sense to be Mario. So for the look, pa- Wicked Sephiroth nailed it, though. <laughs> oh, good, good. I'm glad. I'm glad some people listening to the show are better at this than you are. <laughs> oh, you hush your fuss. <laughs> so it's wait fun minute, for the wait for minute, power- what image. I what? didn't see the image. Oh, oh. Wait. I thought you were going to show me the image afterwards. Oh, of the drink. Yeah. Oh, it's in the. It's. I'm showing it on the stream. Oh, that's what I need to do. I mean, minimize this. There it is. Oh. <laughs> he sloshed. Okay, so okay. so for the PowerPoint, I, I I just typed in the video game and then the word drunk in image Google search, and I got some really funny um, uh, like deviant <laughs> art type stuff. That's a great picture. Yeah, <laughs> that is a great picture. Okay, right, next time I, I'm gonna have a better shot at because I'll be able to see the drink. Okay, last time I couldn't see the drink. Okay, so this one's a, a green one. Okay, it's a Bacardi rum, uh, fresh lime, fresh mint, brown sugar, and sparkling water. And like, this is meant to be based on a game character, too. Yeah, a game or a game character. Green. Yeah. Crap. It's a lot of green. I hate the fact that I'm going to miss this because it could be Link. That would be just... That would be the easy thing, though. It would be Link. Mint leaves. But then there's another part where it's like, well... All right, you're on the right track. Really? On the right track. That's your first thought? It is my first thought. For now. This was the Zelda Ocarina of Lime. There it is. Boom. I finally got one. <laughs> I'm glad I went with my first gu- my first guess because I was this close to being like, but Halo exists. And I'm sure d- people love Halo at the bars. So. You know, but, but a Master Chief drink is going to be like tough. You know, it's going to have like, I don't know, shrapnel in it. <laughs> <laughs> we put an actual bullet at the bottom of the cup. All right, here we go. Uh, our next actual drink. Actual gunpowder. We get a half shot of Goldschlager. Ugh. Half shot of wild turkey, and then a can of ginger ale. Okay, I need this. St- wow, that's an oddity. Yeah. Um, I almost want to call that the gold coin. <laughs> wild turkey. I I I have that could be a Samus Aran, but I don't know where the wild turkey would come from. Right, gold so, coin. So yeah, a, I, I. All right, I so mean, it's a, it's a very golden, one. yellowy drink. So it is the golden chocobo. Why, why would you do that to a chocobo? That's just <laughs> chocobo what's, deserves what's he drinking better there? than that. Is that is it, what's he drinking there? Did that come from a chocobo? <laughs> it probably did. Probably pureed chocobo. Some nasty mess. Ouch. Who's wild turkey? Yeah, a gold slogger. Mm, oh, that just sounds that awful. sounds awful. I don't care who you are. All right, up next. Okay, this is two shots. All right, the the one on the left is a uh, uh, two thirds gold tequila and then a third orange juice and the other one is two thirds lime juice and then a third bowl blue so it's I feel all if that orange one, if yellow that, and all blue the sad part is if that yellow one was red I'd say that's the portal drink oh uh, Purnell it's the portal shots really yeah you got it boom I'll take it so you can't overthink <laughs> these you can't overthink these because these are people drinking <laughs> <laughs> that is true oh I see because they're not basing on the portals they're basing on the robots yeah they were the co-op but for the record if you've never played Portal 2 and co-op oh my god we should do that because I've never done that it's, I played through all of the so first Portal so fun one of the best co-op games ever along with like Explosion Man Explosion Man is just you yelling at me. <laughs> yes, that's what makes it great. <laughs> I, that was me playing with Matt. <laughs> it's like, Matt, what are you right. doing? This one's kind of Jump a gimme down. based on the image, but it's a gin and tonic, lime, sugar syrup, and then a little chaser of a Bombay Sapphire Gin and Blue Caracal. It's like a Resident Evil drink? <laughs> like the T-Virus? Yes. It is the G-Virus and the T-Virus. <laughs> What <laughs> is that the name of it? Yeah, they called it. Well, they guess so. So the main the main drink um, <laughs> is, is I guess the G virus, and then there's a little syringe of like something else you shoot into it. It's the T virus. So which, by the way, I just need to point out. Aside <laughs> from the first one, which I couldn't see that fit the image of, 
I've been nailing all of these. You've been doing good. You've been, I think you would have gotten the Sonic the Hedgehog one. Now, if you've seen like the little red at the bottom with the blue on the top, I think it would have been all right. All right. Um, I think I have one more. Okay, this one is a half shot Malibu rum and a half shot of Midori. It's very green. Very, very green. Oh, wow. It's the Bubsy drink now. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think I'm going to miss this one because I'm having trouble thinking of another uh, iconic green character. I want to call it... The, see, that's the thing. Like, right, what do you want to call it? First, first thought. What's it? Well, I'm going with Halo again. It's the Halo drink. You think you think Wait. you think a Halo drink is Malibu rum? Uh, maybe. I mean, it's not the Barbie Horse Adventures drink. <laughs> no, this one's kind of dumb. This was just the one-up shot. It was like a one-up. Um... Oh, like Mario. So yeah. finally, we get a Mario drink, and it's green. Come on, man. <laughs> they know. So they this one is better. just two people dressed up as Mario and Luigi on and the they side are of a road. Drunk as yeah. fish. I think it's outside of a convention. That, that wasn't a Tips? good scene. <laughs> but that's a hilarious image, though. <laughs> See, I'm not. I don't even feel bad here. So I missed two out of six, <laughs> and I came close with the first one because I still named Alien Brain Hemorrhage, which, for the record, is a great drink. Oh, that was a great episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, the picture is an image of Steve Urkel drunk from the one episode of Family Matters where they were trying to teach kids that drinking is bad. So they had Urkel get drunk, and like I, I'm trying to remember what heck, he got hurt in some way, like he crashed a car or something. He but, was uh, no. He was he was walking across a clothesline in between buildings, and they had to, they had to talk him back. That's what it was because yeah. he kind of he started to sober up on the line. He was like, now I'm scared. <laughs> oh, Steve. Well, thank you for playing the game. Name the drink. I'm, I, that was very silly. Oh, it was, of course, it was very silly. <laughs> I oh. want to drink some of those, but not that nasty behind wild turkey garbage. I don't want to drink any of those. <laughs> None of that sounds like a good time to me. <laughs> what? Any? None of the ones you named? No. There were some great ones in there. No way. No. Oh, maybe the ginger ale one, but there's so much other nasty stuff into it. I just like ginger ale. Mmm, ginger ale. All right, for now, we are on to your uh, your second pick. Let me see what I got here on my list of tunes. Well, I'm going to go with this one because this is from another game that I was... Well, the game... It exists in that game, too. But another game I was really addicted to for a long time. And this was submitted by listener Mike Myers. This is the Patty's theme Luida's Bar track from the game Dragon Quest Heroes on the Vita, PS3, and PS4, proposed by Koichi Sugiyama.
Welcome back. You're listening to Patty's theme from Luita's Bar from the game Dragon Quest Heroes on the PS Vita, PlayStation 3, and PlayStation 4, composed by Koichi Sugiyama. Well, kind of cheating in the sense that I saw the track on the list and immediately like, well, I gotta pick that because uh, I, well, I haven't, like, I played a little bit of Dragon Quest Heroes proper, but the place where I heard this track the most was Dragon Quest IX, which is was an addiction for me for a while. And I was a big fan of that track, as you heard earlier when it started, because the clapping was addictive for me. Like, it just... You clap along with it. At least yeah. until you get tired. At least until you've heard it for 50 hours, and you're just like, you know, I don't need to clap anymore. Yeah, the first but, track first track we played had a, lot of, had a lot of hand claps in it. And it feels good. Like, when you're really into it, you want to clap along with it, you're feeling the spirit of the music. That's how you know it's doing its job. It's doing a great job. But enough about what I think. Let's listen to what Mike Myers thinks of this track. Patty, a.k.a. Luita, is the proprietor of the bar in the drag... Oh, it's the same person. Okay. Is the proprietor of the bar in the Dragon Quest series that bears her name. Years after Dragon Quest IX and missing out on the Japan-only MMO Dragon Quest X, it was the hero spinoff that rekindled my love of Dragon Quest that has been going since the first game on the NES reached the US in 1989, thus becoming my first ever RPG, let alone JRPG. Because Sony stopped supporting the PS3 and Vita in the West, I actually imported Dragon Quest Heroes and its sequel to play in Japanese on my PS3, and this also kickstarted my real efforts to learn the language. Shabam bam! And I do remember when he bought that too. Like, it's a. Uh, Cause I was surprised, like, just get a PS4, but he's like, I ain't touching that PS4 because they don't support their products, which I can't knock him for because he's right. <laughs> Especially now with this recent issue with the CMOS battery. Good lord, son. But, um, this track is legitimately fantastic. Actually, like, there's one last line in this. He says, um, for now, I totally remember that I also heard this theme. No, 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 I wrote that. I wrote that. I wrote that. Oh, that was me. okay, that was you. I thought he was saying, hey, for now, also, and I, it's funny, I saw, I saw DQ9. So I read, um, I totally remember Dairy that. Dairy Queen 9. I also heard this at Dairy Queen 9. I've always been sucker for clapping at Dairy Queen. Hey, who isn't a sucker for clapping at Dairy Queen? They have the best blizzards. Though, for the record, they discontinued the nerd blizzard like in 2017. And I didn't realize it. I actually went to Dairy Queen like a week or two ago on a whim to just kind of have like a, I want to feel good sort of sort of thing. So I was like, I'm getting nostalgic. Mm. And that show was like, I want a nerd's blizzard. And I'm like, what? Oh, man. <laughs> like, no, the best uh, uh, Rita's Rita's Water Ice. Two years ago, they had Fruity Pebbles topping for their frozen custard, and it was uh, incredible. And the past two years, <laughs> they did not have it anymore. <laughs> so See, I, you would have liked that. You would have probably liked that beer I had on Sunday then. Yeah, I saw. No, it was like a sour. No way. It was a Fruity Pebbles no beer. Way, no way. It's appropriate for the episode Tavern, but it was a <laughs> Fruity Pebbles beer. It was. It was only Ooh. available for like a week. I did recently have one, uh, the Two Stones Pub down the road. Mm-hmm. They had I, I tasted it and it was terrible. For, I didn't like it, but yeah, I think you like it. It was actually it was a peanut butter and jelly uh, IPA. Yep, I would drink it. It tasted exactly as it sounds. Not into it. <laughs> no, Doug, I would love I'm to like, see. They made this for you. <laughs> for the listeners, and also Rob knows this already, but for the listeners. I had a weird thing I used to do back in the day. Honestly, I would still do it. Let's be real here. I just need to have a little extra money in hand at the time. But I would go to the bar, and I was not a big fan of just like the generic, everybody get a car bomb. Yeah. I was like, I want these guys go to work. They get bartenders licenses. They work hard to learn how to mix drinks and get licensed to do it. And they got people just come up asking for like these these typical drinks that they're like they make ad nauseum all night. Like I want to make get them to see if they can put that to work mm-hmm. and come up with a really cool thing. So I would go in and say things like, "Can you make a drink that tastes like X?" And if they say no, I'm like that's cool. Give me give me an Irish car bomb then. Um, but or a white Russian or a whiskey sour or whatever. But I liked this. I liked it when the bartender would go, "Oh, you know, I never tried to do that. Let me see what I can do." And they would go behind the counter, and they would throw stuff together, and he's like, okay, try this. And I'm like, and he, whether they succeeded or failed, I would give them like a pretty decent tip, like a $10, $20 tip for trying. Mm-hmm. Because the whole point was to make them think outside the box, like, oh, I can try to work with this and see what you can come up with. Yeah, I remember, I remember, like, I remember it was a Bar 13 or whatever it was called at the time. 
that I was yeah, de- that was where I ordered. I requested a peanut butter and yeah, jelly yeah. shot. I was DJing there and, a whole bunch, and like, yeah, you ordered that, and I was like, oh, they're not going to do that. They're going to be like, man, stop bugging me. But oh that, no, he was excited. The, oh, it was a woman. She's like, I can no, do this. Hold it was on. her, and it was somebody else, and they were like working together to like figure it out. <laughs> like, how can we make this taste like a peanut butter and jelly? And they succeeded. That's the important part. They pulled it off, and it was delicious. I've tried strawberry cheesecake, uh, like just random stuff. I was just like, I want to taste like this. Mm-hmm. And um, they generally can pull it off because mixologists are really good at what they do. But they just they rarely get the chance to put that to the test because, like, we all like what we like. You go to the bar, you request what you're used to. Like, my typical go-to drinks are white Russians, whiskey sours, and uh, Moscow mules. Like, that's my three. And there's nothing particularly special about those. They probably make those all the time. Yeah, so but like, you, eh. know, you know what you're getting into. And that's that's a big thing. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. And also alien brain hemorrhages. I love those two. Can't but order, that can't, was one I can't order that everywhere. Oh, I know, but I sure as heck can try. <laughs> Make me a lemon warhead. See, that could be fun. That would be fun. A lemon warhead. Ugh. How how sour would it have to be, though, to count as a warhead? To feel like they succeeded. I never liked the sour ones. I know you've always liked the sour ones. Never oh, liked the sour them. ones made you, they made your face twist up. That's how you know they did the yeah, job. I'm not right? into that. All right, so this this next track is coming from Bedroth, and it's, a, it's on the nose on the nose in a good way this is from super star wars for the super nintendo and it is the super cantina fight super because you don't really know star wars but this is the cantina music i think it's a cantina music was was this the place where han shot first yes okay see i know that you know that much um and it is composed by paul webb so i guess it is in in the style of cantina uh webb composed first which is like the style of music Oh, I, I listen to Cantina. What are you into? Metal? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I, 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 I stopped listening to metal and like. I like school. Cantina pop. I listen to Cantina pop. <laughs> you have to add the pop at the end. If you add pop, anything can be a genre. I like the vegetable pop. Once no, you, veggie pop. Once you hear that, uh, once you hear that, um, that. <laughs> Once you hear that clarinet going, you're like, everybody in the pit. was the cantina fight from super star wars for the super nintendo i mean arranged by paul webb for the super nintendo i mean that's that's some classic super nintendo sound and some classic jazz action (laughs) it's not i feel like it's funny we it's like we should say it because it's appropriate due to it actually being trivia it's not, yeah, it, it's, it's appropriate. So it's like, a style of music specifically in the Star Wars universe. I, I had no idea that that's something that they that they did. I mean, I mean, I guess I shouldn't be surprised because the fandom runs deep in Star Wars. But yeah, it's a sp- we, special kind of jazz in the Star Wars universe we, called jizz. We, and we owe this knowledge to Stephen Miller, yeah. which I love how he says, "Please enjoy this cursed knowledge." <laughs> like, we do, we do, we do, we do. And when I went to look it up on on uh, on Google, like 
all of the list like oh it was made popular by all of these bands and all of these artists they're all that's not real <laughs> they're all star wars bands this is fake history they're rewrite they're rewriting their own history for now but i can't hey i can i can appreciate that i like i'm a big fan of i'm a big sucker for world building mm. well, well bedrock that's why i like trails of cold steel so much there could be a whole artist wiki for that game for all i know i bet you i bet there is i bet there is and i'm so like who the, who the blacksmiths are in every town and like who their parents are and where they're <laughs> from and what their family the dog to is. be married to who? Yeah. The blacksmith from Cantalina Berg. I don't know. Well, this track was picked by Bedroth and he writes, All right, I finally got a submission for the week. After listening through to a playlist of about 30 songs, I ended up going, just going up with this old chestnut. You can tell for now it's dedicated to him because I know how much he loves all of these space movies. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say though, like, you know, I don't, well, I guess the, from the joke perspective, I would say I hate Star Wars, but really, I don't hate Star Wars, and I totally get why people like them. I just generally like the rag on the fact that the names are terrible to pronounce half the time, and uh, it's good versus evil, probably in its purest form for a major piece of uh, sci-fi. Uh like it, it, it very much. I heard that people did tell me there's like a, there's actually a gray force or something like that, but it's rarely brought up. But for yeah, the most yeah. part, it's like we're not getting side. into this extended universe nonsense. We were doing movies. These are movies. Yeah, in the movies, it's yeah. totally dark side and Jedi. Like it's one or the other. You're the light. <laughs> like, oh, you're the dark. You're the good. Oh, yeah, you're the you're evil. one or the other. Yeah. Like it'd have been interesting if the SE wrote like Anakin to like to kind of toe the line. Because he had good intentions, but, you know, he had to do some bad what? things to get there. The great but, side. They think they be the lamest Jedis ever. They're like, <laughs> they're the ones doing the taxes. Really, they, they, they literally were tapping to both elements. It's like, I'm really angry, so I'm going to melt things. Mm. But when I'm feeling good and just, I'm going to melt things with a different source of energy. <laughs> so, I don't see the problem. It works. Like, people are complex creatures. And the things that we do and the feelings we have, obviously there are truly things where it's like straight up, this is dark as mess, or mm. this is about as profoundly light as it can get. But much of what we are is just this hodgepodge of like, I'm a person and I did this thing with good intentions, but at the same time, but well, the best way to describe it is like, heck, good, the good place had the best scenario, the way to describe it. Like they just worked through it how the levels of detail that go into every action we take. How you could, like, verse it down to, like, how good or bad is it? Like, that sandwich you're eating, how was it produced? What ingredients went into it? How were those ingredients produced? Were they made through way of, like, bad slave labor in a foreign country you've never been to? That still technically makes it bad, but you'll never know that because you wouldn't know unless you researched it. Like, weird stuff like that. And if you don't go that deep, you can just talk about simple levels of well i felt like i wanted to do this thing it required me to do some bad things in the sense of like you know morality to do it but the purpose behind doing it was for a good cause in the world of star wars that's dark side no matter how you slice it that's just you're dark yeah you've like, gone too ah, far you've gone too far it doesn't matter you've gone doesn't too matter. far you, you know ate what? that grape at the grocery store without paying for the whole batch dark side you know Time to start working with Darth Vader and blow up a whole planet because you ate a grape from you know the what? grocery store produce aisle. I like the space stories. I like the I like the big mechanical robots and the people shooting each other with lasers. I'm all into that. I'm I'm, I'm I love that stuff. But like I always think it's funny when like when kids like want to dress up as the as like Darth Vader and the stormtroopers and they're like and they have like like and there's like I don't know like the images and the toys and all that stuff for all of the bad guys are out there and I'm like. They're evil. <laughs> they murder like people. Do, not just that, but like you do realize Darth Vader didn't choose to wear that suit, right? Like he had to wear that suit because he was burned beyond repair. Because his and other he had suit breathing was issues in the dry cleaners. <laughs> <laughs> he had no choice. I'm sure Darth Vader could have worn a nice schmock or some jeans and a shirt. He would have much have preferred had that to his a heat lovely, and lovely black robe. Yeah, he'd have yeah. been happy with it. It's still dark, but it's it's breathable. It breathes. <laughs> All right, we're running. We're running a little short on time, so let's move on to your uh, final pick. Unfortunately, my tr my next track can't be from another Star Wars piece because if it could be, oh, oh baby. <laughs> but I can instead go with this track. 
That came from Hemek. Hemek. Um, This is from a game I've actually never played, but the track itself sounds so good. I had to go with it. This is from, uh, well, rather, I think the game is called Uncharted Waters, and the track is titled The Card Master, and it's composed by Yoko Kano. Welcome back. You're listening to the card master from the game Uncharted Waters, composed by Yoko Kano. And according to sources, including Rob and friends in chat, and this the- is actually the Yoko Kano from the Cowboy Bebop OST. Didn't I know that? Would not have known that because I've never watched all of Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> da, 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 da. Um, but let's talk about what Chris Murray, or sorry, it's not even Chris Murray, poor guy. 
a poor guy. <laughs> what Mac has to say about this cool track. Uncharted Waters was a game I really wanted to like as a kid, but my 10 year old brain got overwhelmed and I abandoned ship. <laughs> and then he did say excuse the pun, so he knew what he was doing. Nevertheless, Yoko Kano's incredible score has always stuck with me, especially the tavern music, because it's smoky and dingy and a little sorrowful. The arranged version by Kano really lays that on thick. And you know I like them thick. Ba -da -ba -ba -da. That's our hammock. <laughs> it's so good. This is this a is great, a great this, this is a hammock track, too. This is, this is a smoky bar. It's dark, you know? Big round tables and booths. You know, you're meeting somebody there. And, and, the wham, and, the wham. Yeah. and this Show is playing. Up. The band is playing this, and there's a piano. That's the weirdest thing for me. It's like, I hate cigars. I hate cigarettes. And yet, with that in mind, I've always liked the idea of the whole dark, dingy, smoke-filled like, hey. bar with the mysterious stranger sitting at the table waiting for you. Like, hello, welcome. I'm sorry to call this meeting so suddenly, but I have important information I need to convey to you. <laughs> Like, really? What is it? Couldn't you have chosen a much more breathable location with which to tell me what you had to yeah, say? You go to, uh, you go to Club Rhythm and Pixels, and you, and, you, and you step down into it, and it's, it's dark, and there's red lights, and there's a band playing, and there's the sweet, sweet smell of fog machine smoke. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Because we're it's just like trying to give the you the vibe without the death. Because indoor smoking is not cool, and you shouldn't be smoking. You're here to that. I like that idea. You get the vibe without the cancer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And everyone smokes candy cigars. That way you still get that vibe too. That's all candy cigarettes. and that's just, It's more of a Purnell bar, but you know. Hey, I'm in. Like, I was that kid. When my friends did smoke cigars and cigarettes in, in my like high school years, I did dupally have candy cigarettes sometimes just to <laughs> rip on it. Like, I want to be a part of the gang. Yeah, that's good sugar. <laughs> well, I was that guy. That's I had good. no that shame in admitting that either. That's delicious. All right, well, I'm going to turn this smooth, sexy track all the way down, and we're going to get into the part of the show we call the bonus round. Bonus round. Oh, going to listen to bonus round. Oh, Purnell, I got something for you on the bonus yeah. round. I don't know why I sound like an old Southern guy for some reason. Um, the bonus round is where we play covers and remixes and arrangements on our theme today. And uh, my first pick also comes from Hammock because he picked from one of my favorite cover bands, The Con Souls. This is In the Bar from Streets of Rage 2, composed by Yuzo Koshiro and arranged and performed by The Con Souls. Thank you. 
That was In the Bar from Streets of Rage 2, composed by Yuto Koshiro, arranged and performed by the Consoles. That came to us by way of Hammock. Hammock! <laughs> he says, when you're beating them up, them being street punks, nothing says I'm in the bar more than I'm in the bar from Streets of Rage 2. It's, <laughs> one, it's one of my favorite tracks from the game, of course, composed by Yuto Koshiro. But here's a bub 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 bonus round version done by the Consoles. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's I agree. Like, I'm a big sucker for the just the just. Boom, 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 yeah, oh, I love that boom, bass. The bass is so fun. Uh, best yes. instrument. Oh my god! And I love one thing that just came up was like a random side chat in the side. Like we were talking about, you know, jazz music because that's what soul is associated with this. And then it was like, oh yeah, bar music. And then we ended up switching to the idea of like apparently like, Wicked Seth. I was mentioning there's like a. Oh, no, no, sorry, no, before that, which is also worth noting, though, but, like, she brought up the idea of Brave Fence and Musashi. Restaurants, the restaurant track from that game as her version of, like, a bar track, mm. which is a fantastic pick. And now we're talking about getting Square Enix to get off their butt and remake, like, Brave Fence and Musashi at Parasite Eve, which I 100% agree oh, with. Oh, a remake of Parasite Eve would be interesting. I mean, especially if they redid, it. if they redid the, the mod, like, the character models and everything to make it more, <laughs> like, Less more blocky. Current. Yeah, less blocky, but... I, That'd be awesome. That'd be, it's, a, it's not a long game either. It's short. Yeah. And like, honestly, I, I was playing it recently. The battle system is really good. But the problem is due to the limitation that they were running with, because they were trying to have like these large character models and stuff on yeah. the screen. I feel like it could use an improvement with modern day gaming mm. to make it such you have like a wider range of motion. You can move around more. Um, so like the actual combat has you evading things more frequently. 
and had to give you more mobility. Yeah, it was so well, unique. Like, have, have there been other games that have done that style before or, or after? Uh, not, not so many. I feel like there may be one or two that are eluding me right now. Because I, I definitely have played games where you evade enemies, but then you go to the menu to do actual attacks and stuff. But it's not a common thing you get to come across. And yeah. Parasite Eve was definitely the first one to do that. So... I would like to see more of it. And I'm going to end up digging for it later because now you got me questioning it and trying to remember more of them. If yeah, anybody just, in the chat can recall one, though, by all means, let us know. Yeah, I just I'll, remember it being like, wow, that's something else like this. It's so unique. Um, all right, so Purnell, your bonus round pick, please. All right, well, I have to go with this. This is another game that I have actually never played before. I'm familiar with it because I've heard a number of people talk about it, but I had never heard anything from it until this pick from Stephen Miller came through. This is the opening theme from the game Full Throttle called Legacy. And it's composed by a band called the Gone Jackals. And this thing is sweet.
Oh, oh, back. We're back too. <laughs> so welcome back. You were just listening to Legacy, aka the opening theme from the game Full Throttle, composed by the Gone Jackals and submitted by listener Stephen Murray. This is freaking bangers. I listened to it twice before saying I'm picking this track. <laughs> I was sold. Um, let's see what he has to say about this tune. Mm. This one is a bit of a cheat since it doesn't technically play during a bar scene, but the game proper begins in a bar, so the association has been planted in my head since I played this game as a kid. Full Throttle has always been my favorite adventure game, and I used to repeatedly restart the game just to watch this cinematic and absorb all the small details and listen to the music. Arid Wasteland, interesting. Hover Cars, cool and interesting. A bike with about 47 tailpipes that drives over said hover car while a kick-ass biker jam plays over it? Now you've got 10-year-old Steve hooked. I think I saw that opening more than any other opening cinematic in my life, and I spent hours clicking on every little thing in that opening bar to hear Ben's thoughts on it. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. This is cool. Mm-hmm. That's like, a this is... And just the interlude from this, you said... Bit of a cheat since it doesn't technically play during a bar scene. Guess what? You got it right because that's why I like. Like it didn't have to play during a bar scene. It's just like what gives you the vibe or the feeling of a bar too. Like that totally works. <laughs> so mission accomplished because I heard this track and my thought was somebody playing this on like a biker bar jukebox. Like it's totally yeah. Fits. That's what it sounds like to me too. Like a like a rough bar, like a rough rough location with a bunch of bunch of people wearing yeah. leather jackets and vests. Yeah, like those TV shows where there's always yeah. the two the two two characters. One's kind of like you know, like shy, like not so like he's like the good hearted kid, and then the other person's like kind of the more rugged character. They walk into the bar and the music's playing, and everybody's like fighting. He's like, "How are we gonna get the information we need?" And the other guy's like, "Need this one to me." But he walks on the counter. He's like, "Do do do." He plays the whole thing up like, "I'm here. I'm looking for rugged Jack." And he's like, <laughs> he, has, like, he has to get himself pumped up first, so he plays the entire six minute song. <laughs> is this going somewhere mate yeah. yeah actually just let the song play out jerk the, the, relax the next song on the ball and on the and next song on the um on the jukebox is like dolly parton like i will always love you <laughs> <laughs> um, so for more information on the bonus round go to rhythm and we'll have links to all the artists band camps and sound clouds and links to their 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 where you can find their stuff on the internet so i think we got something special for you Coming up right now for the end of the show. Uh, hey! <laughs> so I should put some context on that for po- folks who don't recognize it, though I hope a lot of people do because it brings a smile to my face. So back in the day, there was a little-known RPG that was produced by Game Arts and then um, ported to the States by Working Designs called Lunar the Silver Star. Now, in Lunar the Silver Star, you travel the world on your quest, and every town you visited had a bar. And the bar itself had its own you know bar theme like a typical game would have, but... In each bar, there was a, sing- a, a singing barmaid. And if you spoke to her, she was like the girl in town that everyone came to listen to sing. So you would go to her and she'd sing her song for you. And every town had its own girl and she had the la 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 to a certain pitch. But it was always on tune. So the first track you heard was like how one of the good girl, how the good singers would have sung the songs. Like this, even though it's just la la's, it's on rhythm, it's rhythmic, you know. But then that second version was the one town. It was like the like the the podunk like you know town, and you went to the bar to hear her sing, and she was a terrible singer, and everybody in the bar complained about how bad she was, but she didn't know it. She was like, "I oh, know I'm the best singer there is. Check this out." And she starts singing it, and it's all key, and it just sounds awful. <laughs> but it's also funny because you've listened to like ten good singers so far, and now you come across her, and it's like, "Oh, this is atrocious." <laughs> but. 
I thought it would be a nice little like random Easter egg to throw on a tavern episode. I like it. I think I think it adds a little flair to the end of the show, and for people who know Lunar, I think they're going to enjoy that too. <laughs> la, 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 la. And I used to sing that song as a kid too. I used to, I used to walk around like la 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 la. You were you were the most popular kid in school. Oh, all well, the kids <laughs> loved me. They well, loved I, my perfect singing pitch. Well, thanks to everyone for joining us on episode 27-6 of Rhythm and Pixels. This was our Patreon live episode, um, all about tavern music, bar music, whether in a game or not in a game. Um, it's all that style of music. That's um, right. And like I said, this is a Patreon live stream episode. So if you are a member of our Patreon at any any level, then you get access to one of these live recordings once a month. Though these episodes do get edited down and sent out, sent out, and 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 released as a normal podcast episode, this uh, last track uh, comes to us by way of Daryl the Last Recon. This is Bar from Front Mission for the Super Nintendo, composed by Noriko Matsueda. And uh, Daryl says, "Yes, we all remember the iconic track, made famous by the now gone VGM Jukebox podcast, a show that was so awesome and great. I still regret not being able to catch it during its heyday." Granted, listening to the episodes last year while working through the pandemic made life easier. How I miss it so. But because of that show, I was able to not only become friends with many of the alumni of that show, but start not one but two podcasts of my own with the possibility of a third one on the way. Congratulations. Congratulations, Daryl. It's always nice when you have a fresh baby podcast. Like a newborn baby. Um, So I say we all raise a glass to Haju, Keyglyph, um, and Josh. Mm. And everything that made the VGM jukebox one of the best VGM podcasts around. We miss you, and you meant so much to us, and you always will. I'll toast to that. That's how they ended every episode. You mean so much to us, and you always will. <laughs> It'd be nice if they just on a whim was like, you know, one reunion episode just for the sake of trying it. I heard um, Keycliffe was on the most recent um, Legacy Music Hour episode. So she's still really? yeah she's still out there putting in the podcast work. Might be nice to have um, either of them back on our show sometime soon. Oh, that would um, be awesome. Cause I miss Keith. I haven't spoken to her in a while actually. Yeah, or 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 even Haju, the haunted jukebox. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Like we couldn't we couldn't get Emily or Josh, but we could get Haju. <laughs> we got Haju. We got Haju. <laughs> Gotta get we got that. Cookie. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so thanks everyone for listening. If you would like, if you want to get in touch with us, if you want to say hi. Um, if you want to say stop what you're doing, we hate your show. Or if you have a track suggestion or topic suggestion, or if you know of a, of a good cover band, or if you're in a cover band or an arranger or a remixer, we want to hear all about that. And the best way to do that is over email. And our email address is rhythmandpixels at hotmail.com. Um, and for a full track listing from this episode, all of our episodes, and access to all of our episodes, go to our website www.rhythmandpixels.com and you can check us out on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter we are Rhythm and Pixels just all one word you can go to youtube.com slash Rhythm and Pixels all of our episodes are uploaded there we have some additional you know fun videos and we also have a 24-7 uh, 8-bit and 16-bit VGM uh, radio station just all day long playing nothing but classics and deep cuts it's like 800 or 700 tracks. It's all curated by uh, us and other people from VGM podcasts, such as it's a lot of music. yeah, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of music. So from Michael Bridgewater from the from the um, Forever Sound version, uh, Keycliffe has some music in there from the VGM jukebox from back in the day. So there's there's a lot a lot of music on there. It's really cool. Um, and if you'd like to, uh, um, oh, we all have a Discord. So go to the website. The link is there in the toolbar or the menu bar. And they'll take you to our Discord, and there's a lot of fun people there hanging out and chatting. So just come, come, come to our Discord and join the talk. It's a lot of a lot of sharing of tunes and a lot of like goofiness, but um, it's mainly sharing tunes and uh, game news, like what's new. Um, and I could also say though, if you bring a topic, though, it'll get discussed. It will get discussed. And um, if you want to support the show, there's a couple ways to do that. You can go to uh, rhythmandpixels.com/slash/merch. We have all sorts of T-shirts available for you there. We have um. A uh, 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 game, game, um, sound team, sound team battles, battle T-shirts. So you can get like a Konami T-shirt. You can get yourself an SNK T-shirt. We have a Mega Drive T-shirt. Um, we also have uh, jo- uh, T-shirts for the show that are jokes, like Run VGM. We have the the Lobster Racing T-shirts that are all still available. Um, you can TGIF all- versus Capcom. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> um, you can also uh, go to patreon.com slash rhythm and pixels and there you can support us uh, financially by, by there also and um, all, all the money goes to keeping the show on uh, hosted uh, equipment fresh and in the future Robin Purnell going to conventions doing live shows again one day one day it's gonna happen it's gonna happen it'll be there um, and uh, as a member of the Patreon you get access to a weekly prequel episode. You get access to a monthly special Patreon live stream episode. Um, and we like to give shout outs to our highest members at the end of every episode. If I can still do it. Uh, Frankly Zappa, Mike Myers, Vashon8060, That Nick Walker, Ed Wilson from the VG Embassy, Matt's Holmquist, Michael Jennings, Davey Cakes, Justin Schneider from XVGM Radio, Sonic Medley, Taco, Harold Howard, Dave Taylor, Reinhard Selkova, Andreas Milberg, Dan Loughton, Sleepy S'more, Steve Miller, The Autistic Gamer 89, Cameron Worma, Christopher Shenstrom, Bobby Arson from 1UP Funk, Wicked Sephiroth, Carlos from the Heroes 3 podcast, Michael Bridgewater from Forever Sound Version, VGM podcast, and Brian Pitt. So thank you all so, so much for their continued support of our show. And worth noting, just to get it out, because I don't think I've ever said it before, but I think it's coming real soon. Congratulations, Brian Pitt, on your new fatherhood oh, status. Yes, congrats. Congrats to Brian. That's awesome. There's a second toast. Boom! Tavern! Boom. <laughs> Everyone is toasting Brian Pitt. Raise your tea. I finished my tea. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> well this, this show's uh, running a little late, so I'm going to get going. Um, Pranel, it's good to see you again. Thanks, buddy. Same to you. Same and it's good you. seeing everybody else in the chat. You mean so much to us, and you always will. And I say once, and I always say this on here, but I mean it every time, too. If you guys want to talk games, you want to ramble damble about just like general stuff, we're always down to talk. We're all, well, I, I personally feel like we're technically friends. Obviously, we're not like, you know, going on cross country road trips or anything together, but I'd consider you all friends. Like, always welcome to reach out and just chat, talk shop, or whatever. Do some cool brainstorming, whatever it comes down to. Or, heck, do some live, not some live, I guess live streaming, but I wouldn't even know where to start with that. But, you know how it goes. I'm rambling. Stop me. I'm rambling. Wow. You know what happened? What? You did not say, and remember. We didn't get to that. We didn't do the actual. Oh, I thought that's what your number was. <laughs> no. See? Oh. All right. So. Wah, wah. Yeah. All right. So, um,. Thank you for joining us. My name is Rob Nichols. And I'm Pernell. Have a safe week. Thanks for listening to the show. If you catch us next week, we'll say goodbye then too. Goodbye. And remember, Rob. <laughs> and remember. So, as we were talking earlier in the episode, we kind of made it a point of note. Like, you don't have to. We don't, we're not making this episode with the intent of being like, you got to like booze. You got to like drinking. It's... Not the idea of going to a bar and drinking booze and being all sloshed up and stuff. What we're thinking about more so here, when it comes down to the idea of like the bar slash tavern, is the community aspect that comes from a lot of people going to some of these places. It's nice to get together with your friends, you know, whether it's at a bar or even around just like a table in your house or a picnic table in your backyard or a park. You know, have some beverages. It could be tea. I'm a big tea sucker myself. Um some biscuits, uh, board games, card games, your Switches, your 3DS, your Vitas, whatever. The point is, though, it's nice to get around with your friends, around a table, interacting with each other, and just enjoying each other's company. You don't have to go to crazy places for adventures. You don't have to have a big event to go to. Just spend time with your damn friends. It's worth it, and it feels friggin' good. Bonus points if you play a board game, though, because I love